It's me underneath the prosthetics. It's me. Um, it's my voice. It's me moving. I knew how it was going to be. I just the only thing that I hadn't really considered was the weight of the f-ing thing. <laughs> When I first heard about the show and when I was asked to audition for it, I got um, two sets of sides. One was from Primal Fear and one was from Hellraiser. And, you know, from that, I kind of pieced a little bit together. Um, I didn't know anything really, though. And then I sort of created a mood board mind map of who I thought this person was, having not been given any scripts or anything at all. I had um, Christopher Lee was on there as Dracula. I had uh, Pinhead was obviously on there. I had Freddy Krueger on there. Uh, Voldemort was on there as well. And a lot of fire. There was like a lot of fire. Um, and went into a meeting with Matt and Ross with a little book under my arm, um, showed it to them and we had an amazing discussion and they, after the meeting, kind of went and got these incredible visuals and, and 3D sort of mock-ups of, of, of Vecna and we spoke about Vecna and spoke about Henry and, 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 and one and then I got the scripts but the initial sort of month-long period of auditioning and, 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 and getting to know Matt and Ross, I knew very, very little but somehow managed to piece enough together to be able to formulate the reality and actually who this person was. You cannot hide from me. Seven and a half hours. So we would start, depending on the day, we'd start anywhere between sort of 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning to be able to shoot for sort of like 10 a.m. ish. And then we'd shoot for 10 hours, 12 hours, and then sort of it's an hour D rig. It was incredible. It was amazing. You know, it was a lot. It was, you know, you, you're surrounded by, you know, five or six other human beings. You know, I'm in character trying to. Uh, you know, remain in a place of, of real darkness. And then, you know, you have to get to set and make sure that everything's glued on and that you're moist enough <laughs> on my exterior and then hoisted, put into wire rigs. So I'm, you know, floating above the ground and, and all of this kind of stuff. It was amazing. It was amazing. I found that I had to, on a more like, um, practical level rather than like a sort of like emotional level i found that i had to give more like the the suit moves with the face quite well but it's not as pliable because you've you know you've got a few centimeters or a centimeter or two between your actual skin and and the, and what's able to be seen so the idea of the eyebrows particularly you have to make sure that you're I was really sort of giving it in the facial expression and, and not what I would maybe give facially uh, if I was, you know, just not in a suit like that. I think what was great is that underneath it all is the intention of this real hatred and this real resentment. And the other thing that was really interesting to me is just energetically. Um, I remember like feeling like I had to really force the energy out of me, make sure that that it was palpable. It's there, you're feeling it there. And I remember having to sit, you know, outside and really push this thing out of me because you're working through another layer and you're working through clothes, but thick, thick clothes, basically. So all of that, I was able to do sort of like beforehand so that when the costume was put on me, it didn't feel so alien. I hope that one day you're able to ask some of the cast about their experience of working with me when I'm in that mode, because it's it's quite dark. It's a lot of darkness in there and there's a lot of hatred. So I'm pacing around often beforehand, saying some pretty vile things under my breath about whoever's in front of me. You know, the poor um, actor playing Chrissy, she was terrified. Sadie's really tough, like she's a tough person. <laughs> so she was kind of all right. But Millie cried. I mean, Millie, the first time Millie saw me, she burst into tears. Um, it was in the rehearsal and, and yeah, she literally just burst into tears. <sighs> Henry. 
Henry's got this isolated view of the world in which he sees it as a place full of lies. He feels outside of it. And that sort of built a resentment in him. In episode seven, obviously, where you see the the, the, the transformation of, of Henry into Vecna, um, that's another level of, of, of resentment and of hatred. I think with Henry, there is still a bit of humanity in him. You know, you might be able to kind of calm him down and talk him round. But once she sends him you know, to his demise, as it were. Emotionally, it's just continual development. It's another chapter in his life and in his story that leads him to being the being that he is. You tricked me. Tricked you? No, I saved you. You are a prisoner here, just like me. One of the things that I worked on in development, in character development, was the fact that he sees a lot of himself in her. She is as powerful as he is. You know, none of the others have ever been as powerful as he is. She obviously is ostracized from her friendship group, and he sees a lot of himself in that. You know, whilst she is the key for him to be able to escape, there comes this feeling of, of of truth in the fact that when he says, imagine what we could do together, we could really re reshape the world. But yeah, she's his equal in a lot of ways. We're alike, you and I. I do find him very sympathetic. I mean, as an actor, I have to constantly make sure that I love the person that I'm playing, that I understand where they're coming from and the reasons for them being the way that they are. A lot of what Henry says, particularly in Seven, I find to be quite true, if I'm being honest. The idea that people are putting on a front, I think is an interesting concept for us all to kind of, or for me anyway. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for it all to be over. If you track back to uh, the end of Seven, where he's talking about the world is a lie and that he saw his parents uh, who, uh, as they truly were and the terrible things that particularly his father or the way that Henry sees it, the, the terrible things that his father had done, he goes after people predominantly with guilt and with shame. The reason for that is because of his upbringing, I would assume. Max particularly going through, as she does in episode four, the guilt and the shame of, of losing her brother in season three. When we go through these periods of guilt and shame, it does weaken us it, because it becomes an obsessive thought and it's an uncomfortable feeling. It's him seeking what I would refer to in my book as I wrote it down, rightful vengeance is what I would call it. It is time, Max. Time for you. Join me. 